first uh, greetings from a very warm Belgrade. We have like 30 degrees today, and this is really climate change in action. Uh, so uh, greetings to everyone. I'm sorry I'm not able to be there, but this is simply the situation with, uh, with this pandemic. Uh, and also before I start, I would like to congratulate organizers for managing to run this conference smoothly. I can imagine there was so many uh, problems. Uh, so let's start. I will sh share the screen. Uh, the host disabled participant uh, sharing screen. Uh, can you enable sharing screen? Try it again, please. Okay, okay. Okay, is it okay? I think it is, so I will start. So uh, the title of the presentation is Tailoring Conservation to Suit Serbian Spruce. Yelena, uh, yeah? I'm sorry, I don't see your screen. Really? Yeah, or is it maybe just my system? Uh, is it okay? No, we can't see it either here yet. Okay. Sorry. Can you see it now? Not yet. Do you maybe have two screens? And you're sharing the wrong one. No, I think this should now. No, I still don't see. Okay, just a second. Okay, it works now. Okay, sorry, sorry for the delay. Uh, so, uh, the talk of the presentation is tailoring conservation to suit Serbian spruce. Uh, this is uh, uh, this is the outline of the presentation. So, first, I would like to introduce this species to you. Then, I would like to say a few words about current genetic and other knowledge about the species. Then, what are current conservation measures and what we will do in the future. So. Uh, this is the species, this beautiful tree, and I really hope that you will like it as much as I do. Uh, so this species, Serbian spruce or Pizza omorica, it grows here on this very small, in this very small uh, area on border between Serbia and Bosnia and Herzegovina in this very nice envir environment. So the common name is omorica. You can recognize it because it has white stripes on the backside of the, of the needles. And this species was discovered relatively late for one tree uh, because at that time in 1875, this region, the Balkan region was considered as unknown and unexplored region by many botanists, European botanists. Botanists. But immediately when this species was discovered, it attracted the attention of scientists, and uh, this is still the case today. Uh, this species is a botanical rarity because it has several archaic features, and I think also it's important for science because it helped us to understand population dynamics in glacial refugia. Uh, we have more than 700 publications on this species so far. However, many of them are in local languages. So you might assume that we know quite a lot about this species. Unfortunately, this is not the case because there is surprisingly large amount of contradictory data about more or less all aspects related to this species, including really basic things like what is the distribution range, the number of remnant populations and trees, levels of genetic diversity and genetic differentiation, adaptability. Okay, this was not studied, but there are some indications about adaptability of this species. What is the reproductive strategy? What is the age, origin, evolutionary relations, and history? 
So we have to be very careful when we read all, all these publications. Just to demonstrate this, for instance, this is basic thing. If you want to do conservation, you need to do, know what is the distribution range of the species and what is the number of remnant populations and trees. So we do have uh, several maps from 1951, 65, 7, 1977, and so on. And they are showing more or less the same. So there is a, a group, uh, uh, populations are always fragmented and they are scattered within a small area. These populations were present at this time in 1977 and those labeled in white, they were destroyed by fire. So they were not present at this time in this region. And when I talk about populations, I will refer to those in Serbia as Eastern and those in Bosnia and Herzegovina as Western populations. Then we had several publications saying that the number of remnant populations and trees is much lower. For instance, there was one UCN report saying that there is less than 1,000 living trees. So what is the situation? Are those maps outdated? Maybe the situation has changed since 1950s. Uh, for instance, wildfire is rather common throughout Serbian spruce range, so maybe some populations were simply disappeared. So the first thing that we did when we started to work with Serbian spruce is extensive field work. And we are doing this since 2005. Now we have a new UCN assessment. However, I'm not quite satisfied with it yet. We have to improve it. And now we have better data because we uh, got this project and we were able to use leader technology to map all Eastern populations. And also we have maps for Western populations. And this was based on the field work. So this is what we have for Eastern populations. So we know more or less accurately what is the, the area occupied by a population. These are trees uh, used in a study and these are two different populations. I will show the, uh, these two populations later on during the presentation. And I will do the same with this. This is the smallest population, Eastern population, which was uh, genetically studied. Uh, for the western part uh, of the species range, we have maps like this. And what is very nice to see, these locations are actually here. So populations manage to recover over time. And this is very nice. Uh, so uh, the thing is, apparently, it was just necessary to go to the field and to see uh, uh, whether something changed uh, from 1950s to today. And this, I have to say, is really tedious task because Serbian spruce always grows on very difficult terrain. For instance, uh, inclination is like 70 degrees. It's very difficult to approach them, so it's really not easy to go to sites with Serbian spruce and to sample these trees. For instance, this is the River Drina Canyon, and in these very steep ravines, uh, the, they are Serbian sp uh, spruce trees. I hope you can see a bunch of trees here in this ravine, and there is a, a, a larger group of trees here in this ravine. And so I have to say, sometimes we really needed professional help to go to these sites with Serbian spruce and to sample. Anyway, for the first time since 1950s, we do have accurate data from the field for both Eastern and Western populations. So we know now that the uh, natural range of this species is something like 200 square kilometers. There are 30 remnant populations. They are fragmented and they uh, are uh, consisting of several dozens to several thousands of trees. And this makes Serbian spruce, which is a cold adapted conifer and pioneer conifer, one of the most threatened Mediterranean trees, along with the Sicilian fir with only 23, uh, 24 remnant trees, especially in terms of the global climate warming. When we are talking about climate warning, I have to say that the negative effects are already visible on Serbian spruce. For instance, there was a severe drought in 2012, and uh, uh, we observed the physiological weakening of trees, and this was followed by infestation by a fungi. And then within a period of four to five years, 
trees completely dry. And this was first observed in one seed orchard, but later on we uh, observed this in natural populations as well, unfortunately. Uh, so, given the pace of the uh, climate change, I think this species will disappear from its natural habitat in the near future. Another problem is, as I already mentioned, is wildfire, uh, past and present. And uh, this was really not, not nice thing to see. This happened this August when one population, Western population, the largest population in Bosnia, Veliki Stolac, was on fire. We still do not know what is the damage done by this, uh, this uh, incident. So we will see in the future uh, whether population will recover and what we will do about it. Uh, now I'm switching to current conservation measures. So UCN recognized that this species has to be red listed and this was done in 1998, category endangered. Uh, but uh, activities on, in con on its conservation were initiated earlier in 1955 in former Yugoslavia. So people were thinking in, at that time, okay, we have localized populations, they are untouched forests, and they should be left for free development. And this is the highest level of protection for uh, any species. Uh, these are rigid conservation measures without any intervention allowed and they were not based on genetic knowledge. And this is okay because at that time in 1955, we did not have genetic data. But what is not okay is that they remained to the present day. And a lot of things has changed since 1950s. So now we have genetically informed conservation, we have genetic data, genomic data, and they are essential for formulating uh, conservation programs. We have standard in situ conservation measures, uh, ex situ conservation measures, and we also have dynamic conservation, which is considered as a promising alternative to these standard measures. So. Uh, how it is done. So you have genetic layout of populations, then you uh, select a certain number of genetic conservation units that are actively managed and monitored, and they comprise one ne uh, network, sometimes in different eco-geographical zones. And this network is supposed to capture the extant uh, genetic diversity of a species. Uh, dynamic conservation is good because it aims at maintaining genetic diversity of forestry species over time and preserving evolutionary processes and adaptive potential in uh, their populations. How it is done? Uh, because spontaneous mating and reproduction are allowed, and these are conditions uh, which are suitable for evolutionary forces to act on gene frequencies. Uh, nowadays, I see that management of units is evolving towards a species-specific approach, and actually what we believe and the, what I would like to show to you today is I think that uh, these uh, uh, measures, uh, dynamic conservations, uh, the conservation has to be tailored for each species individually. So, it is obvious by now that the future conservation measures of Serbian spruce will be dynamic conservation. This is possible now because we uh, have genetic knowledge on these species, which has been accumulated over the past 15 years. And again, contradictory data. We have uh, some publications saying that this species has low genetic diversity, which is actually expected when you have species like this, uh, small sized populations, fragmented populations, and so on. But we also have uh, 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 other work saying that uh, this species has surprisingly high level of neutral genetic diversity. First paper in this uh, uh, regard was from 1991, and this was quite a surprise uh, when uh, uh, colleagues found that Serbian spruce, a narrow endemic, contains much genetic variation. And this is also what, what we know from our work. Uh, just to show you numbers, so these are 14 Western populations, and this is, uh, this is gene diversity. So it goes from, let's say, 0, 04 to 0, 05, and this is okay. When it comes to Eastern populations, numbers are uh, even higher. 
And I think this is good. This is very promising because this means genetic diversity is necessary uh, for long-term survival. And also, uh, I have to say, uh, although this does not mean necessarily that this species has high adaptive diversity, I think this is the case, and uh, there are some indications about this, and I think this is promising because this means that we can really do something. So what are the requirements for the implementation of uh, dynamic conservation? Since our conservation objective is endangered species, uh, we have to know uh, just for the, for the beginning, area occupied by a population, uh, uh, they, their, uh, uh, their effective population sizes, which have to be equal or larger than 15. And although we have not published yet data with all populations analyzed with the same time of molecular markers, we have these data. So we we have all populations from the entire natural range of these species analyzed. And this is something like uh, 1,400 uh, trees. And now the question is, how many GCUs in a network we need to capture the extent uh, genetic diversity in these species? Now we have to take into consideration another unexpected finding in Serbian spruce, and this is rather high genetic differentiation of populations, which are distant several kilometers or several dozen of kilometers. And this is resulting again from one unexpected thing, and this is exceptionally limited gene flow. Just to show you, so uh, uh, for uh, this is the table with uh, uh, data for 14 Western populations. So uh, uh, Hedrix GST is uh, 0 0.271, and these populations are something like 40 uh, kilometers distant. When uh, it comes to Eastern populations, which are distant eight kilometers in average, numbers are even higher. And I have to say, this was really unexpected. And just to show you how limited gene flow in Serbian spruce is. So these are two populations. They are far found on uh, two hills, which are one next to each other. They are facing each other. They are distant half kilometer, and they represent two different gene pools, because the optimal number of gene pools in this analysis was, was 10. We have also this information that one seed is exchanged between Eastern populations, which are distant eight kilometer on average, every three generations. So this is wind pollinated and wind dispersed, dispersed species. This is highly unexpected, especially if we know that there was pollen flow between refugia during ice ages. And here we have two populations distant half kilometer and there is no gene flow, basically no gene flow. Uh, reasons for this, we do not know. Uh, we are still speculating. We have to work on this a little bit more. Maybe microclimate conditions. For instance, there is high humidity throughout Serbian spruce range, and maybe abundant fogs are hampering occurrence of winds which are necessary for dispersal. Then maybe we have uh, differences in uh, phenological differences with regard to the onset and duration of flowering at different sites. Then maybe uh, there are annual and individual oscillation in seed production dependent on habitat properties. There are some papers uh, about this. So we do not know. We have to work on this. And uh, when we know that there is very limited gene flow in this species, then we have to consider also, when we think about the uh, conservation, about within population genetic structure. And this is exactly what we did. So we use the smallest population in Serbia, and this is this population. It is surrounded by a number of other populations which have one mitochondrial type, and this population, not a single tree has this uh, ma uh, haplotype, mitochondrial haplotype, but it has all other detected haplotypes detected in this species. So uh, we did the analysis, we, uh, we analyzed all trees, and what we found that actually this population is consisting of three different gene pools. And furthermore, they are still spatially separated. So this is first gene pool, this is second second gene pool, and this is third gene pool, and they are genetically differentiated. So this is really 
unbelievable. Uh, and this complicates a lot uh, implementation of the dynamic conservation. So for instance, now we are wondering, do we have to consider smaller units than populations as GCUs? Probably yes. And maybe this is also situation in other, uh, uh, in populations of other three species in glacial refugia in the Mediterranean. Uh, so, uh, 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 what we wanted to see in the, uh, in the meanwhile is uh, uh, whether uh, these GCUs, which are already listed in the EUGIS uh, database, uh, are uh, if effective. So uh, there are several, several units uh, list, uh, 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 declared as GCUs. There are four natural populations and three planted forests. Uh, and uh, we found that as much as 40% of alleles of Western populations are not presented in the extent network of four GCUs. I have to say, we did not consider three planted stands. This is a problem with the uh, planted stands forests uh, uh, of Serbian spruce, because usually the origin of the planting material is unknown, and uh, there is, uh, therefore their value for conservation is uh, has to be assessed. And also we did not consider Eastern populations, which are also genetically diverse and uh, different, genetically differentiated. So this percent will probably go up when we have uh, all, all populations uh, analyzed. But uh, when we consider only these Western populations, uh, I have to say, since uh, the optimal number of genetic groups was 10, we suggested to uh, declare 10 GCUs. Uh, the, the thing is, it is very expensive to manage 10 GCUs. Uh, therefore, we assessed relative contribution of the total allelic diversity of each population partitioned into uh, its uh, within population and between population components. And we were able to say, okay, there are eight populations which are important when we are talking about within population uh, diversity. The, uh, four populations uh, are important when we, we talk about genetic differentiation and two are globally important uh, in terms of diversity and differentiation. But in case money is not an issue, and this sounds very good, uh, we, we proposed for the first time one population, one unit strategy for delineation of GCUs in one species in Serbian spruce. And it is possible that we will consider subunits as well due to the potential substructure of populations. And when we are talking about money for also for research and for implementation of uh, dynamic conservation, I have to say uh, everything that I presented here was funded only by three projects and we did not have much, uh, much resources. So uh, a lot of things is done uh, using our internal resources and it was done be only because of our enthusiasm because we really we understand that if we want to save this species, we have to do something. Uh, the thing is, we applied to several projects, of course, but no luck so far. Uh, and uh, sometimes they say it's too local, sometimes it's not enough science, sometimes it's too much science. But uh, OK, there is always a possibility that we simply do not know how to write proper project proposals, which will be funded. But I think there is something else is, uh, uh, what is issue here. And this is uh, we know what we have to do and what we want to do. But this simply does not fit to current calls. So we need more calls which are applicable to this aspect. This is what I think. Uh, and uh, we were thinking, okay, while we wait for the right calls and uh, to get money to do what we want to do, this species might disappear. So we have to find alternative ways to provide funding for research and conservation of Serbian spruce. So this is the reason why I established NGO. Uh, I'm sorry, this is in, in my language, but we will have a uh, English version soon. So uh, I formulated a 10 years program for Serbian spruce rescue. I'm talking about rescue now. 
uh, it's worth at least 10 million euros. Uh, I have 10 week work packages. And what we want to do, we want to collect donations for research and for conservation. Uh, NGO will be fully operational next year and we will organize several meetings and you are very, very welcome to join us. Uh, the thing is, before we started, we'd had to do a lot of background activities to talk to a lot of people, uh, 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 actually to have on board all parties which are relevant for the preservation of Serbian spruce, ministries, institutes uh, for plant conservation, companies which are responsible for the management and so on. And this was really, really a difficult thing to do. We had to talk to these people, to educate them and to explain them that really we have to do something immediately. But I think we are good. And uh, I just want uh, shortly to present now what are the work packages. So the first one is inventory, uh, really to have uh, good uh, data. Uh, I would like to have every single individual uh, geolocated uh, so that we really know the number of trees, uh, really uh, accurate data, number of trees, uh, census size, what is the age of trees, health condition, and so on. We will use thermal imaging and infrared sensing. Uh, uh, then we want to know what is the vegetation at sites uh, with Serbian spruce, what is the soil composition. We need a lot of material, a lot of photographs, a lot of footage because we want to make interactive map uh, with a lot of information available for people visiting our site. Uh, then I call this work package communal in inspection, but uh, what is really uh, uh, what I really want to do here is uh, we do not have accurate climate data. We do have these micro locations with microclimate con specific conditions, and I think it's different. At, uh, they are different at different sites. So the station, which is 50 kilometers from these sites, simply does not have data which are applicable to to these micro locations. So we need the uh, uh, good climate data, then we can do a lot of correlations. Uh, also, we want to uh, know uh, soil properties at each site. Uh, we want to know uh, to study microbiota. For instance, mycorrhiza was not studied uh, in Serbian spruce, was not studied, but I'm quite sure that there is mycorrhiza. Uh, then the genetic ID card, uh, uh, as I mentioned before, we do have a set of highly informative markers and we can really do something like forensics. So if we do not know origin of the tree, we just uh, generate uh, its genotype and we can say, okay, this tree is from this population, this tree is from this population. Uh, of course, we want to uh, genotype uh, not only individuals uh, from the natural range, but also from plantations uh, all over the the world and basically all living specimens. Uh, and uh, as I said, we would like to have a database, something like what was done for Vitis. So you just enter your genetic profile of your individual tree and you see from which population is, is uh, this tree originates. Uh, then, of course, everything what was said uh, here during the, uh, the conference, fundamental research on adaptability, uh, nothing has been done so far in this regard. Uh, we would like to sequence Serbian spruce genome. Hopefully, we will start next year. And here, I would just like to mention shortly why I think that adaptability in Serbian spruce might be uh, there might be something because this species grows on three different types of soils. It thrives in cold and harsh conditions in plantations all over the world, but also in air polluted cities with high summer temperature and low humidity. Uh, also, we know that there are differences in needle, needle anatomy in individuals from different sites. So I think these are all indications that there might be something there. Then Serbian spruce abroad, as I already said, I want to document all plantations and all living specimens uh, to know their origin and also to see what is uh, in museums and we can also analyze these, uh, these uh, specimens. Help from friends. Uh, the thing is, uh, uh, we have to prior prioritize actions. So. Uh, the first thing to do is to help these species to survive in situ so that we have enough material later for ex situ measures. So this is really very important to start immediately with this. 
and uh, related to the previous work package, uh, the situation, the thing is that Serbian spruce has very poor natural regeneration in nature. So we have to uh, collect cones to uh, have seeds, to produce seedlings, and then to reintroduce seedlings to natural populations, for instance. And we cannot do this in this way. This is really dangerous. So we need uh, uh, high-tech equipment. Uh, this is one very nice, uh, 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 apparatus, so it's drawn with the attachment with these mechanical hands. They take a, a, a branch with cones, which are always on the top of the tree, and uh, with scissors they cut the branch and they bring a branch with cones to us, and then we can have seeds. Uh, then uh, we also want to uh, have uh, uh, to, to produce uh, seedlings through tissue culture. This is difficult. Uh, but it's possible. Uh, then uh, I call this work package pantry. So we need gene bags, uh, seed gene banks, we need the uh, plant material maintained in in vitro tissue culture, we need the uh, ex situ collections, plantations and seed orchards, but with no origin of the material. Uh, uh, and uh, Unfortunately, this is the situation. I don't think that Serbian spruce will survive in its natural range. So uh, uh, I think uh, when it comes to mig migration, since we know that there is very uh, limited, uh, uh, it has very limited dispersal ability, uh, it, uh, uh, there is another uh, problem. And uh, uh, th this is example for uh, Abis religiosa, which has been mentioned in one of previous talks. So uh, the problem is uh, uh, in response to the climate change, okay, uh, trees can mig uh, uh, have altitudinal migrations, but the problem is that the mountains within Serbian spruce natural range are simply not high enough. So there is no place to migrate great if these species can migrate at all. So I think assisted migration is the only solution for these species and we have to consider sites in Northern Europe uh, for, for this activity. So we need simulations to see uh, which are the suitable places for, for these species in Northern Europe. Uh, we did something similar uh, for uh, Serbia and Bosnia. And as you can see here, this is natural uh, Serbian spruce natural range. These are plantations and this in red and orange are uh, sites where, uh, uh, which are suitable for Serbian spruce in the near future. Uh, we also have to solve several legal obstacles regarding assisted migration. For instance, we, do not, uh, we did not sign yet Nagoya protocol. And yeah, uh, we have to think about this uh, genetic resource of one country is in, in another country. So yeah, we have a lot of work uh, still to, to do. Uh, and the last work package, I would really like to make new spruce phylogeny using genomic data and some other data as well. Uh, the, uh, and again, we have contradictory information here. So for instance, we think that Serbian spruce originated in Southeast Asia. Its closest relatives are Pizza orientalis, Cauc uh, Caucasian uh, uh, spruce, and two Japanese endemics. And this species uh, is 16 million years old. Now we have new data, genomic data, and we think that Serbian spruce might be even older. The problem is that our findings are in line only with one study, with the work of Jonathan Wright from 1955. And they contradict all available studies on spruce phylogeny published so far. So I'm feeling a little bit like Don Quixote here, but yeah, I think I'm right. Uh, and uh, uh, so uh, our activities on collecting donations compri uh, uh, comprise animate animating entire regional companies and every single person. We will have very intense media campaign. Uh, for instance, it will be possible for common people to buy a tree and to follow its destiny over time using this interactive map, which I've been mentioning. Then for instance, companies that give money uh, will receive a certificate that they are Serbian spruce protectors. There will be annual celebrations devoted to Serbian spruce uh, where we will give these certificates and so on. So this is what I wanted to tell you. And uh, for the end, my take home messages are this. So 
Populations of endangered forest tree species in the Mediterranean may be genetically rather complex and are indeed fragile system, uh, systems, and they are severely threatened by the climate warning. Expect unexpected when it comes to genetics. And each action on uh, conservation of these uh, populations and species has to be based on sound genetic knowledge, genetic genomic data, uh, and preferably including uh, with, uh, studies on within population genetic structure and focusing first here, I wanted to mention uh, prioritization. So what is the most important thing, thing to do at the beginning and what we can do later? We need material for ex situ collections later on. Uh, then dynamic conservation, of course, uh, is uh, preferred. Uh, we advocate uh, species-specific measures, and uh, we also think that uh, carefully planned assisted migration may be really necessary for species rescue. And funding for activities of this kind have, I think, have to be improved. So thank you for your attention, and I will be very glad to give answers to all your questions. Thank you.